simplest strategy to invest in the stock market yourself is an indexing strategy, investing in an index fund, which sounds well and good, but what does that actually mean? How do I index? That's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. The first step to indexing is to open a brokerage account, which will allow you to buy shares in an index fund. What should you look for in a brokerage account? On the one hand, you want a low cost brokerage account. In the modern day, in most countries, you should be able to find brokerage accounts that don't charge commissions on trades, so you don't have to pay each time you buy shares of an index fund, and that don't charge you fees for minimum amounts or just for keeping the account open over time. Really, most competition has got it to where there shouldn't be any fees involved in your brokerage account. You can check, you can research. I've found that to be the case in Spain for the most part. I found that for sure to be the case in the US. And I think in other countries too, there are low or zero cost brokerage accounts. Once you have that, I would also go for an account that a company that is established and that has been around for decades. For example, my money is in TD Ameritrade for the most part. Charles Schwab bought them, so my money will soon be in Charles Schwab. I should disclose I own shares of Charles Schwab as an investor. But in general, I found that kind of company more attractive. Fidelity is a great option. Companies that have been around for decades, like I said. So I would be more cautious about investing my money in a brokerage like Robinhood. I find Robinhood to be a little bit too focused on making investing more of a game, more of a trading app. It's not really what I would recommend. You want to check a little bit about, is this a quality brokerage account? Will they support me as a customer? Will I be able to access my money when I need it? And so on. You want to feel good about your money. You don't want to think too much about your brokerage account once you put your money in. Again, I would go with something that's been established and around for decades. Once you do that, you pick your brokerage account. From there, all you have to do, you have to fill out some forms. You'll have to share some identifying information. You may have to tell the brokerage what your investing experience is and it's fine if it's not a lot of experience for an indexing strategy you don't need a lot of experience so you set that up you open the account then you have to transfer money into the account so you'll have to connect it to your savings account or checking account in your bank you'll have to give the identifying information the account number the router number the swift or iban number whatever the case is you'll have to transfer the money in and then you may have to wait two or three days for the money to clear so you can start investing. That's the whole process. So which index fund are we buying? I'm going to stick to the S&P 500 as the underlying index. There's an argument to be made for investing in the NASDAQ, and maybe we'll cover that in a video in the future. But for now, I think the S&P 500 is the most representative of the stock market. It's the most balanced. I just think it's the right option. So we take the S&P 500. The first exchange traded fund or the most notable early exchange traded fund was the SPY. It was tracking the S&P 500. State Street is the firm that offered it then and offers it now. And it is available for 0.09% expenses. Basically meaning for every $100 you put into it, you pay nine cents a year to have it managed. There's another option that I think is actually better, the VOO, which is sold by Vanguard. Vanguard is a pioneer in low-cost index funds, and they sell this one for 0.03%. So it's only three cents on every $100 every year. It's really not a big difference. If for whatever reason you only have SPY available instead of VOO, that's fine. But I'm going to say VOO is the index fund that we are going to use when we start investing. Again, we're going for low cost. We're going for exposure to the S&P 500. And that's our best option. We've decided we're going to buy the VOO. Now, how do we actually go about buying it? It's not so complicated, but there are a couple steps. In your brokerage, you're going to want to find where you can trade. The word might be trade, it might be order, it might be buy, it might say go to stocks and ETFs or just ETFs. We're buying again an exchange traded fund. So you just want to find the right button. I'm showing on my screen how it works in TD Ameritrade as an example, but that's where you want to go. That's your starting point. Go to buy or sell. From there, you're buying here. And so if you're buying, let's assume that we're going to buy it with our full money at once. You need to calculate how many shares you're going to buy or 
if your brokerage allows you, you can say, I want to put in a money amount. Some brokerages allow you to buy fractional shares. So instead of buying only 100 shares, you can buy 100.56 shares or whatever your money calculates to compared to the share price. But you put in either the share amount and there will often be a share calculator right there. So you don't have to do the math yourself. You can just plug it into the screen or you're going to put a dollar amount and that's what you're going to try to buy. What type of order do you want to make? You can make a limit order, which says I'm only going to buy at a certain price, or you can make a market order. When I'm thinking about an index fund, which is so heavily traded and where there are not going to be a lot of surprises, I think I might go to a market order. That ensures me that I will get the trade made as long as I have enough money in my account compared to the shares I ask for. And so I would lean towards a market order in this case. I generally prefer limit orders. We'll talk about that when we talk about how to buy stocks. But in this case, a market order, maybe I wait until the stock market is open if I can, just in case there's any crazy jumps. But in general, we're not talking about a huge difference when we're talking about a long-term time period that I want to hold these shares for. So I would lean towards a market order. From there, once you've entered all your information, how many shares, market order, you have to confirm the order. You'll get some sort of button, review, confirm, whatever. You'll get to check everything. Make sure you're buying and not selling. I have made that mistake. It stinks. So make sure you're buying at this point. Make sure that you've reviewed everything, that you have enough money to make your order, and then you place your order. Again, whatever the language is for your specific brokerage. And if it's a market order and the market is open, it will fill right away. If it's a limit order, it depends on where the shares are trading and whether it's at or below your buy limit price. And if the market's not open, it'll wait until the market is open to place the order. And so you still have some time to cancel, but that's it. Once the market's open, once your limit price is hit, or once the market order is filled, you will have the shares of that index fund waiting for you in your brokerage. Then you can track the performance over time. And we'll talk about all that later, but you've made your buy. Congratulations, you're now indexing. I wanna make one note before we wrap up. Buying the index fund is the easy part, and you haven't completed the job. The hard part, and where you grow your money, is holding on to the index fund and adding to your position over time. Keep buying shares of the index fund. As you save more money, you invest it. That, along with the growth that you generally get from the market, is where you really compound your savings, and you really can start planning for your future. There's never a guarantee, but the more that you add over time, you balance out timing risk, and you give yourself a better chance of growing that money over the future, over the decades. So that's the key to an indexing strategy. The reason an indexing strategy works is because it's the easiest strategy, it's a low cost, and it gives you access to the wider stock market growth over time. That's what we've discussed here. It's not a super complicated strategy. And if you've watched this video, as well as all of the videos from how to start investing, you may not need to watch anymore. If you think that indexing is the right strategy for you, then great, you can be all set, you can stop here. Thank you for watching, and I hope you got value out of that. If you wanna get more in the future, both a couple nuances to the indexing strategy and going further into investing in general and how to buy stocks, how to hold stocks, how to build a portfolio, whether to actually apply to your own investing or just to understand what's going on with the market and with indexing better, stay tuned for more of a short investing guide. Subscribe to this channel, check out the website, shortinvestingguide.com. Contact me, you can find my email address on the website, you can leave comments below and stay tuned for more. I hope you found this valuable. Congrats if this is all you're gonna do. Best of luck with your financial future and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Mm -hmm.